Thank you for joining us uh, today. My name is Cindy Williams. I'm the vendor coordinator for the California Peace Officers Association and welcome to our second presentation this morning on our first demo days. As you know, along with the rest of the world, we've had to do a, a pivot to digital. So we're excited to bring this platform to you and these great resources to you so you can stay connected in 2020. Um, so our second presentation this morning is brought to you by Tyler Technologies. Great resources for you and solutions in many categories in the uh, technology categories. So with that, I would like to introduce to you the Regional Sales Director for Tyler Technologies, Rob Simmons. Thank you, Cindy. Um, my name is Rob Simons. I'm the West Region Sales Director for Tyler Technologies. I happen to be based in Northern California and joining you from my home studio uh, this morning. Eric, if you'd like to go ahead and share your screen. I, um, I'm just going to um, spend two, two or three minutes uh, introducing you to who Tyler is, just to provide a little context to the demo. The demo, of course, is the featured part of this presentation and demonstrating our software today is Eric Wishard. Eric is joining you from Atlanta. Uh, where he is uh, a solutions consultant for us and a retired police officer. So again, thank you for this opportunity to the CPOA and those of you attending. Um, Eric, if you'd like to advance the screen. We represent Tyler Technologies. Tyler is the largest publicly traded company devoted to providing software solutions to the public sector. We have a number of divisions. Of course, one of those is public safety and courts. So you'll be seeing our public safety suite of products or at least a portion of it this morning. We also have offerings in the financial management aspects of, of public agencies, community development, as I mentioned, courts, uh, school, school related software, a number of solutions that serve our over 15,000 clients throughout the United States. We're publicly traded. Um, you can, that means that you can see with full transparency our financial results. We have 36 quarter, consecutive quarters of double digit growth. And I don't mention that to brag. Uh, we are a highly profitable company, but it's important to our clients. We are, um, we do not pay dividends. We invest our profits back into our business. We'll spend $100 million this year in research and development. And in fact, our, our second quarter results were we're so good, even in this uh, COVID economy we're dealing with today, that we increased our R&D spend 8% uh, over the initial plan coming into the year. What that means to our customers really is um, a lot of new products being introduced, um, a company that's continuing to, to innovate. You're going to see evidence of that in today's demonstration, particularly around not just our CAD system, but, but our um, relatively new record system. Uh, and also mobile technologies that you'll see evidence of today. It also is important because our financial performance allows us to invest in people. So in about the past three years, we have doubled our support staff to provide um, even better service uh, to our customers. So what you're gonna see today is a brief uh, view of a workflow that takes you from a, a 911 call, a call for service through our CAD system to see how that lands in records for subsequent reporting about an incident. We're gonna show you the mobile products that support our CAD and, and records management systems as well to enable officers to work more efficiently in the field. And then finally, we're gonna spend just a few minutes showing you another important aspect of our set of, of law enforcement applications and that is getting information out and doing it in a way that's meaningful uh, to, to those who need that information, who analyze that information, whether it's command staff, crime analysts, uh, various, various types of user communities. So um, with that, Eric, I'm gonna turn it over to you. I'm gonna turn my camera off uh, just from a, a, a bandwidth standpoint. Um, I think Eric will probably demonstrate uh, also with the, uh, his camera. We'll have a, a time for a question and answer period, um, 10 or 15 minutes towards the end of the, the demonstration too. Thank you for joining us. Well, I think it's good morning there for everyone, uh, everyone there. It's, it's afternoon for us here on the East Coast. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. And like Rob said, my name's Eric. I'm a former DeKalb County police officer and IT project manager for DeKalb County, Georgia. Um, <clears throat> so uh, 
I'm starting off here in CAD. So this is our enterprise CAD application. And uh, CAD is designed to be highly configurable. So it meets the needs of uh, if you're multi-jurisdictional, if you're multi-agency, the, the system can keep individual agencies working either in the same CAD or in separate CAD systems. Uh, can, it is capable of CAD to CAD from one Tyler CAD to the next. And um, it's really designed to give the dispatcher all the information and capability that they need at their fingertips with speed, because that's that's what they're trying to get done as fast as possible. Accurately put calls in, locate the calls, and get the right resources to the call. So um, here on the left-hand side of the CAD is the call itself. So this is, I have a call pulled up here. The background is blue because it's a, it's knows, the system knows this is a PD assigned, should be a PD unit assigned to this call, um, but it is a multidiscipline as well. So police, fire, EMS <clears throat> can handle all of those resources for the police department, even large fire department, fire departments with hundreds of apparatus and um, those agencies that need cross manning and by day of week, time of day, it, it's capable of tracking all of that as well. Personnel on apparatus, changes statuses of apparatus when personnel leave those units and things like that. So it is a highly capable CAD system. Below the call itself is all the details that may result from a call. That's call guide questions for the dispatcher, what questions need to be asked on, the, on a particular call, who is on that call, uh, the people, suspects, victims, witnesses, whatever the case may be, the CAD can track all of that. The system has the capability as well to, when you put a person on the call, it'll automatically run NCIC. So that those things can be triggered as well as alerts, alerts coming in from not only the CAD system, but from the records management system as well. That can be automated as well. So it, it's all, again, getting the dispatcher the information they have to have when they need it. And then, of course, the right-hand side of my screen is just set up for uh, active calls, units that are on calls, available units. But the system, I can only display it here with on one screen that makes uh, sense and is efficient for this type of demonstration. But we can handle multiple screens. Even, you know, dispatch centers are now going to large large monitors, two or two large monitors and divide the screen up. So even that can be handled because all the windows are configurable, but yet you can control all the configurations from the top down or give your dispatchers all the um, flexibility that they need to set up their own screens. So that, that's all capable. And here's the, the command line at the top. It is a uh, robust command line that also is configurable. So yes, it comes with a base set of codes and rules, but it is, uh, but you can actually alias those to your current uh, command line instructions there. So your uh, personnel don't have to relearn all of the, uh, an entirely new command line system. So I'll go ahead and start another, a new call. And this will take this call all the way to our mobility client in the field. So let's put in an address. This CAD system is a geocentric CAD system as well. So as I start typing, it's giving me suggestions of roads or uh, business aliases that I might be trying to locate in the system. And then the more I type, the more it will narrow this list down. And now I'm down to the last option in my database or in the geo record set. So that is actually the map set to find this location. It's pulled back the data from the map set showing me all the cross streets, all the, all the discipline responsibilities here on the left. And this screen is absolutely configurable uh, by the agency. So if this is more information than you need on a call, you can take it off the form. The form's configurable. Um, it can be set up for when dispatchers are separate from call takers or when they're combined, configurable. So I'm just putting some notes in 
on the call. It can, it'll pull in your 911 phone controller data as well. So your, and it'll accept rebids from the system. Any narratives that get typed go out to the mobile client, but you can also restrict narratives. I can toggle on critical narratives or toggle on PD, PD or fire only narratives so that it only goes so the, so certain narratives can only be viewed by the appropriate dis discipline in the field and keeps those separate from even dispatchers or uh, fire dispatchers, PD dispatchers, things like that. Again, highly configurable. And then below at this bottom bar down here, I have, these are all my alerts coming in from the system. And I have a pop-up toast on the left-hand side, that's right-hand side that's saying, there's a, actually a wanted alert at this location. That's coming from the records management system. So, and um, it's recorded. I've already put one person on the call. So we'll see that in the, in the mobile client and then here is the caller on the call as well so again down here in this lower left is all all the details of the call we like to say everything has its place and everything in its place so it's easily easy to find all right so next i'd like to take you to the mobile client and show you what this call looks like in the field So here is our mobile client and I'm running this on an iPad. So this is a Apple iPad. So it, the, this mobility client, we have a Windows client that runs on desktop machines or laptops, but so many agencies now are moving to more, uh, a more mobile solution, being able to move around with them. But this also gives you, the, you the capability to have your CAD system, your CAD queries, your RMS queries in your pocket. Take it to a meeting, take it to the scene itself. I used to be so frustrated when I'd have to do a burglary report, but I couldn't take the laptop out of the car because they locked them in the car. <laughs> so down below here, the map scrolling through all the calls and below here, um, there's the call, the fight call at 20 East Court Street. So I can select that dispatch myself to that call and so this will send that quick ad and then my, as you notice my screen changes the screen has changed to a pre-configured screen setting for this mobile environment <clears throat> these are all configurable what you see is um determined by the system administrator but there's also different roles so you can have different for different roles, depending on how, um, what uh, you need to see as a line officer versus a detective versus somebody in um, property and evidence. So as you can see here, I am, what, 700 miles away from that call because it's in uh, Illinois and I'm in Georgia. So it's using the actual native capability of the machine to interact with the application giving me turn by turn directions and it will give me turn by turn directions and give me all of the ETA time and, and such, but that's all coming from this machine, which is great because all of that goes up to CAD. It can be put on the CAD map and that gives you, uh, that gives you the ability to um, know where each App, uh, application and device is at. So not only will you know where patrol cars are, but you'll know where the officer is. And then here's the call itself. Now I'm in route to the call. My status has changed in CAD, but so is my screen change. So I can get my turn by turn directions. I can get any na new narratives coming in. Uh, if you have street view in that area, you can actually, you can actually see that as well. And then again, when I change at scene, It'll change my screen to give me additional information. Now it's showing me pre-plan information at the, for that particular location that uh, CAD, is, CAD has stored. So very critical piece of, very critical application, but this is our mobility line. So this is uh, amongst other applications, property and evidence collection tool and our, our reporting tool, which you'll see next, are also cloud-based secure um, mobility applications. I'm going to 
clear from this call and it'll take me back to the map screen and I'm now available for the next call. Obviously, once you have a, uh, once you have a call, you probably might end up having to do a report. <clears throat> so I'll switch over and show you our latest reporting application. This, this application is a prototype. Um, we are on our third generation records management system, our third generation CAD system. And what you're seeing here is our prototype for our third generation report writing system. We've had for several decades now, a Windows version that's on a laptop. Again, it, we need to get officers out of the cars, uh, in with the public, and it just makes it much easier. And quite frankly, officers are expecting to see this kind of thing now um, coming along in the future from a modern public safety software company. <clears throat> so this, this is a prototype. It's far enough along that this is what the officer will see. This is how a lot of the workflow will work. And this is um, <clears throat> also in compliance, which you'll see just in a minute, our records management system and how it looks and feels and flows. So here is, um, so they're keep, keeping continuity between report writing and the records management system and even on into other Tyler products. So what you're looking at here is a list of, of reports that the, um, well, they're list of calls, but the reports that need to be created from those call types. So again, thefts, you know, domestics, those, those things can be automated, especially domestics. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna take this, take a theft, this middle one right here. And what this is saying here is that um, you've, I've interacted with the CAD system or the dispatcher has placed people on my call or vehicles on my call, or I've collected information like a photograph in reference to my call through uh, the, maybe the property and evidence collection tool, mobility tool. So the system already knows these elements are associated with my call and it's asking me, do I want to import them into my report? So here I am, I'm, I'll select all these because of course I do. And now it's associating all those records that were part of the, either the part of the dispatch system now with my report writing system. This is basically the face sheet uh, where and when things happened. So I annotate the times and those kinds of things can be changed, can be edited by the officer even though they're being pulled from the call for service. Now, Next up is the offense. So it's just walking me through creating a report. So what's next? Uh, I want uh, crimes against property for a theft. What type of theft? So traditionally we would just give the officer a search tool and say, okay, here, just go look for what it is you need. But this application actually guides the officer through narrowing it down to what they need and what exactly they need in a common language. So here's a larceny from a vehicle. So that's gonna, this is gonna be a, a break-in of a, of, a, a vehicle of what we call entering auto in Georgia with some items stolen, leave your laptop or something like that in the car <clears throat> and somebody busted out the window and took it. So here's your personal, um, so it's saying it's narrowed it down to this offense. Is that what you want? Yes, I do. And um, let's say it's been committed. Where was it? Where did it happen? All of the UCR and IBR information that needs to be collected in reference to that offense. Record that with the system. And now it moves on to subjects. So I've already related this subject, pulled him into the report from the dispatch system. But here what it's doing is saying, okay, yes, this is the person on the call, but please verify the pertinent information for that particular person. This is actually a feature that our customers asked for, for for many years, and we've finally been able to incorporate it in the system. And then from there, <clears throat> what is, uh, what are we looking for? Who is this person in relationship to this particular report primary? And what is he related to? What offense? So we'll relate him to the larceny offense. And it's just walking the officer through all the parts and pieces, but it only displays what's needed uh, at any given time. Now it'll ask for vehicle. So we'll record vehicle information. Yep. And then next up will be property. 
So enter a description, but what type of property? So this starts to trigger more and more elements that may be needed. So the value of the property, yeah. So recording a backpack and um, saying that that was stolen. And then what is the backpack related to? It's owned by John and it is related to this offense of property stolen from a vehicle. So we're, next up, we'll add another piece of property with a little bit different elements to it. So let's say that the backpack contained a laptop. So the property value, but we have much more detail in reference to this type of property. So I'll turn those fields on, which gives me make, model, serial number, can further define the actual element of that particular item, say that was stolen. And then again, what is it related to? Related to John as the owner and it was involved in a theft. All right. Now here's where we can record in the same section damages to the vehicle. So say the broken, broken window, add the value, it's damaged, and damaged instead of stolen, but still related to John as the victim this offense and that vehicle listed in the report. Narrative can do narrative templates, but here's just a quick throw in a narrative. Now your spell check looks more like word. This is what people are expecting these, this day and age. And my attachments have already been added, the broken window. It'll, once I'm finished, it checks itself and I can submit it. If if there are any errors, obviously it'll walk me through fixing those errors and um, <clears throat> I'm down from three reports to two reports. Right. And where do the reports go? Well, obviously they go to the records management system. So here's our third generation records management system that is cloud-based, just like the mobility products. It is a, um, I'm running it in Chrome here. Some of the significant improvements with this records management system is it's not just a static RMS waiting for you to ask for questions, ask it for data. Here, here's a perfect example of how, why we say this records management system is proactive. It, over here on the right hand side, it's got a list of QPIs, key performance indexes it's letting me know about as soon as I log in. That's right on my personal dashboard. Everybody has a configurable personal dashboard. Um, that, this can, because it is a cloud-based product or, or a hostable product, can be hosted by your, in your agency or by us. Um, you can actually get to this information remotely with a secure VPN back to the servers, or um, you can get to it on vacation if you'd like. So these, these dashboards are just an example of some data that, are, uh, that can be displayed, but it's typically work-oriented uh, or or individual oriented. So maybe <clears throat> I'm a crime analyst and um, I'm do, I got a burglary dashboard. So this is the same record set, the same query for burglary, but displayed three different ways. A list, uh, incident by day of week, so we're, we're high on Mondays, and then the pin map. But that's the same query, just displayed in three different ways and everybody has the access to this tool in the records management system. Some other features of the records management system is our Omnibar. So we have, uh, this is a search tool for the records management system. It searches the entire system from one place. Searches free text fields, narratives, searches for attachments on cases, and it categorizes them over here on the left hand side as to what category that the hits are coming back from. So if I select person, there's 1800 hits coming back from a person query and it's all in reference to tattoos. If I switch that to warrants, it's all in reference to names, Cross, Crossman, Crossley, those kinds of things. So this is an extremely powerful tool but it's actually a commercially available tool. I would I say with 99% certainty that everybody's probably used this tool before. It's used by Dell, it's used by uh, Verizon, Blizzard Gaming, Amazon uses this tool. 
So we, built, we embedded a commercially available search tool in our records management system so that we don't have to recreate the wheel. It's our job to create the most uh, effective law enforcement record management system that we can and um, it saves us a ton of time doing that. So here, obviously we have all the components a modern records management system is, but I'm gonna show you one of the, one of the tools that are specifically built for CID. And there's tools for all different, all the different uh, responsibilities in the side of the records management system. And here's a case, our case assignment tool. But what our customer base has always had a, 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 de a dilemma with in previous versions is seeing multiple bits of data at the same time, right? So if I'm assigning a case, and I read through this and I'm not sure who I want to assign it to. Well, they put this caseload tool right as a flyout window. Whenever you're allowed to sign cases, wherever you assign cases at, you'll see this flyout tool. And from here, I can look at every single detective's caseload and see who needs what and see um, by selecting any of those hyperlinks, it opens in a separate browser window. So I can put it on my second monitor or split the screen. And I don't have to move away from this at all to get to that information. And then I can quickly assign it to, I wanna assign it to myself. Primary investigator. And save that into the system. And I've got knocked down one, one more case out of my 900 cases I need to, um, I need to get to. But here is, here's the notifications. It's notified me that I just received that case. Officers, detectives, supervisors can elect to get their notifications via email as well. So that, that's just one example of the hundreds of tools that are occupation or responsibility specific in the records management system. But for years, we've pumped information into these, into this system, into these systems, CAD, RMS, everything, and we've never had super effective tools to get them out. So what I'd like to show you next is our analytical suite. Here is um, the, our, our geocentric tool for uh, Tyler Analytics. So yes, what you're seeing is a pin map here of Pinellas Park. This is actually Pinellas Park. They allow us to use their, uh, their system for these demonstrations. So you can actually see some of the things that, they're that they have allowed the data sets they're allowing us to replicate and get to, tickets, locations, arrests, all of this is, inf is available. So this tool is specifically designed to consume not only CAD or RMS data, it can, can consume data from other data elements inside the government, um, your local government or what you wanna connect it to. So here you're seeing pins on the map for each of the incidences or calls for service. What you see on these, win on these balloon windows is up to you guys. It's all super configurable, highly configurable, what data you want to compare it to. But um, here, for example, is the spiral tool. So you can even get to calls when, when they're still, you're still too high up. You can still spiral them out and read through each one of those. And, but then on the right hand side is the, the, an, the actual analytics of whatever's being displayed on the map. This is the a comparison between this year and last year. So we're just a little high uh, this, this time this year to the last time, last year at this time. And then here's a day of week, time of day breakdown. And that's super important because just think about how much time it takes you to get to all of this information um, today. You know, all these different pieces of information, a pin map with all of the, all of the list, a list of all the incidents, and then a comparison to last year and a day of time, time of week with a active legend. So, yep, so I didn't even see that. So there's a couple of times that I missed. I thought there were four, but there's five of our most busiest times, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but three different times on Friday. And then it's narrowed my search on my map down to just those elements. But if you look at the comparison up at the top again, we're way above where we were for our most, um, 
our most active uh, call times this time last year. So Eric, I think this is a good, um, this perhaps is a good place to pause. And um, we've, we've covered a, the, really the, the, in the time we've had, which is very short, I recognize, but uh, the, the actual integration of a workflow from a call for service all the way through the analytics. So hopefully you can see what we're showing you here could be very useful to command staff, to crime analysts and others who are really digging into historical data to understand trends. I would add that, you know, we have some purpose-built law enforcement extensions to the Socrato, Socrato product that go beyond what we've been able to show you here that are, that are pretty neat as well. Um, so thanks, Eric. Um, the other thing I, I just have you take away from the presentation is just how geocentric our applications are all the way across the suite from CAD to records into these analytical product products that, um, we've shown you a bit of. So we are an Esri partner, a very strong Esri partner. Esri is baked into our products across the suite. We consume those maps natively. And for your GIS staff, uh, our products are very, very easy to work with from a, uh, from a, a, a GIS perspective. So um, those, are, those are some of the key takeaways, I think, in this, in this short time that we've had with you today. And Rob, thank you for that. And we, we have approached our, our 30 minute threshold there, but I do want to open it up to some questions in the chat. Um, if anyone that has uh, viewed the presentation has some questions of the team at Tyler Tech Technologies, uh, now would be the time to ask them um, uh, before, before we go. And let's not forget, there is a prize at the end of, of the session. So please go ahead, ask your questions in the chat. And, and something did come up for me. Uh, while you were presenting and you know agencies that dispatch for fire and EMS can your CAD system handle those disciplines as well? Yeah thanks Cindy uh, absolutely we do um, and I think it's one of the things that is a standout capability of our CAD system that it is multi not only multi-jurisdictional as as Eric mentioned early on but we'd say multi-discipline as well so fire and EMS are strong components of CAD. And those of you who understand dispatching for fire, you probably understand that building response plans for, for dispatching around uh, fire services, it can be quite complex. And we've been doing that for over 30 years. So it is a strength of our product. Awesome. Um, and, and how do your Tyler public safety products interface to other Tyler products? County using Tyler Odyssey? courts application, things like that? We do. And in California in particular, uh, but, but also across the country, our Odyssey court system is the most widely used court system in the country. Many, many counties in California are Odyssey courts customers. We have uh, natively built integrations between Odyssey and the records product we showed you today. For example, if warrants are entered in the Odyssey court system, they, they move uh, seamlessly into the record system and attach to a subject's jacket, so we know there's a warrant on that person. So that's one example. The another that I'll, I'll mention very very quickly is our e-citation product, uh, which also integrates with the, with our records product and integrates with the Odyssey Courts products as well. So those are two examples. Great, thank you. Any questions from our participants? No, well, I, I think, uh, again, I appreciate Eric and Rob and the entire Tyler Technologies team for spending time with us today on Demo Days. Uh, we look forward, you have another presentation coming up in October. So Tyler Technologies will be with us during our October Demo Days. And so please be, please be sure to share that with everyone. Um, I just saw on the chat that uh, Chris Monahan is a very happy Tyler customer. Thank you for the presentation. These are just a few things we might like to add to our current system. That's wonderful to hear. Thank you, Chris, for that. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> and I'm gonna uh, pull up our, uh, our winner. Of, I'm gonna stop sharing your screen, uh, Eric, and I'm gonna pull up our winner slide so we can see who won. I believe it's a $100 Amazon gift card. Pano Stathos, California Assembly Sergeant at Arms. So congratulations. 
And again, a big thank you to the team at Tyler Technologies for joining us for demo days. Uh, we're going to continue this at the top of the hour every hour. We are taking a lunch break at the noon hour. So we'll see you back here um, at one o'clock uh, for, let's see who's coming up then. Informer Systems is coming up. So we look forward to seeing you then. Uh, again, thanks to everyone uh, for demo days joining us and uh, have a great afternoon. We'll chat soon. Thank you all. Thank you.